Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I have Michael Brave Jayhawk Jensen uh, with a new job. Very excited. Um, we're going to be going over uh, week five in the Survivor Pool, talk about how we did, and then talk about week six and beyond. So I guess I will start. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's not too early, I guess, to be sp sort of specific about the pools that we're playing, you know. Um, so I'm going to, well, we'll go through the individual plays, but I'll start by just kind of recapping what I did. So we had uh, four entries left in Circa, and we went down with Washington on three of them. Uh, I thought that was uh, the best play kind of by a lot. And yep. uh, very uh, low, owner, very low ownership too. Yeah. Not only did they lose, but they, they lost real nice and easy. You know, like there was, there was no sweat. Uh, from the, that's the best for the first the, the first possession i knew knew you were on the wrong end you never had a never had a chance um but we got through one uh entry with uh with detroit so we are still um we are still live and uh we'll talk about the path to uh to get to the end of that one. uh also but what's what's kind of the real good news is in a double picks pool which was now down to like only i guess two thousand people whatever from like eight <laughs> Right. So so we th this was what we had to do. We faded both Miami and Detroit. OK. And that was the and it was doubles. And and and, you know, it was I, I thought it was really important to say to, to number one, try to get people knocked out. And number two, if somehow we get away with it, we'll have like two good teams to use in future doubles that no one will have. OK. Correct. And yeah. Both of them ended up getting stuffed really, really hard. Uh, neither of them had any danger of losing, but um, the fact is we were able to, to, to squeeze by. Like we had in one entry, we used Atlanta, we used Atlanta on both entries. Okay. Uh, never in doubt, right? <laughs> the field goal at the end. And then on one of them, we used Atlanta and Philly actually. And another one, we used Atlanta and Kansas, uh, Atlanta and Philly and Atlanta and Detroit. Uh, no, Atlanta and Philly, Atlanta and somebody. Uh, I don't know, but we we definitely didn't use Detroit in my uh, Detroit or my. Oh, you, you, you didn't take Denver or Tennessee, I see. I tried. I, I, you know what? I couldn't talk him into Denver. That was my. I thought Denver. Lucky you. Denver. Oh, right. Yeah, I love Denver. I thought they were better than uh, just as good at play Atlanta. Oh, Cincinnati. That was the other team that we took. Um, so, and the reason why, again, that we didn't, I didn't mind taking Philly and and Cincinnati was, um, yes, teams like that are are usable in the future, but. But Philly is usable mostly in like weeks where the pool is likely to be over, you know. Um, and again, that's because this is double picks, like what every week the rest starting of the way week or nine, starting, starting week nine. nine. Yeah. Um, so and then Kansas and then uh, Cincinnati. The only time that we really could use them is other weeks where they were going to be seventy percent owned. Okay. Um, yeah. That, so Those we are figured, great picks. So figure we would try it, and, and we kind of got we, and we got away with it. We did lose some people who took Buffalo. So those were some of the knockouts. Um, but overall, just the chalk pretty much advanced kind of throughout. Uh, single pick pools. I think we just played Detroit or something like that. We have two entries there. And so that's where we are. What are, what are you still in? What did you play? Um, and then we'll talk about this coming up. So I, I've been watching the Chiefs games this year, but I really haven't been watching much of anything else that almost really played to our advantage this past week. I honest to God did not know who was playing on Thursday night and Thursday around noon, I said, okay, I need to go lock in Washington for Sunday. And then I got there and I saw they were playing on Thursday. So unfortunately I remembered in time, but there's an alternate reality where I didn't do it until after the game started uh, and would still be in. That, that would have been a funny way to still be in because I always know what the Thursday game is, but I haven't been following as much this year. So we took both on Washington, and we are no uh, longer playing, and that's okay. Okay. Um, I put in the Discord, I, put, I, 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 I made a message uh, Thursday night. I thought it was very interesting be, with Washington losing how that altered possible strategy for Sunday picks, and it really wouldn't have mattered. I don't know what we would have done if I forgot to pick in time and couldn't take Washington because Denver lost and Tennessee lost. So if we had dropped, we would have been eliminated anyway. Uh, and I really don't know if we would have just took Detroit at that point or Miami, but it just, just it just doesn't matter. But I think it's a really interesting discussion, discussion, 
to talk about assuming your pool doesn't lock on Thursday. I actually have played in pools that do do that, it, but most don't. What should you do when the upset happens up front? And this week is also, there's a scenario, Kansas City plays tomorrow. So does Kansas City losing on Thursday night alter strategy? It certainly did last week. Uh, if Washington lost, I, I think dropping to, you know, Denver or Tennessee was a much or Cincinnati is a much more viable option because of the strength Detroit and Miami have in multiple weeks going forward. So first thing I want to talk about, and we'll get to my individual paths here, is when we talk about future value and things like that and projecting out into the future. We talk about this all the time about how how teams improve and teams uh, regress, and every once in a while teams just get repriced in, in a violent way. And uh, the, the 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 winner this week was the was the 49ers. So 49ers having just dismantled the, <laughs> the freaking Cowboys, basically playing the playing the, the backups. Who thought of this that the San Francisco would be playing the backups in the fourth quarter to to the, to Dallas? Yeah, I, was, I tried to watch that game, but then it was pointless. I think I did a puzzle instead. Like San Francisco is now, I see a 17-point favorite against Tampa, like an 11 against Seattle at Arizona. Like at Arizona, like 14, like at Washington, 14. You know, these are not official or whatever, but but this is what happens. They all, all these teams, once once there's a little clarity, get uh, get, get repriced to kind of, you know, make you wonder, not make you wonder, make you rethink, you know, and, and it rewards people who are flexible. You know what I mean? The, well, the options that you provide yourself for stuff like this, the better off you're going to be. And this goes back to what I've said a couple different weeks. If you're going to take a chalky team, let it be one that is an average team at best so that yeah. this scenario doesn't happen where you take San Francisco early on and then they become multiple touchdown favorites in three or four games the remainder of the season, but you used them in week one or two. So I'll last show, year's example yeah. was Philadelphia for that. Yep. yep. So I'll show, I'll show you an example, by the way, of how you can pick up uh, some leverage and pick up some EV, even if you don't knock anybody out. So I just want to show you like visually what I was talking about earlier. So this is the pool that we're still in with like 2000 people left. And the most important thing to look at is these three numbers right here. You have the Niners, Dolphins, and Lions are the three least available teams in the whole pool, okay? They're all good, and that makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah. They're the three least available teams. We have doubles coming from nine through whatever, and we have all three of these teams available, okay? Very, so that, yeah. That's good. You know, listen, that, that doesn't necessarily mean you win, right? but but but, but uh, that that's that's a good thing, okay? Um, what, what it what it does is it creates possible scoop opportunities. It's hard to see that now, but when you get yeah. to those latter weeks, there's not going to be two thousand people. I think it could be twenty five. It could be a hundred. But right. the deeper each week that passes, some of the people that have those three teams will be eliminated, and eventually you might be the only one with them left. So let's let's talk in general about these teams. I guess this week, and then we can do specific stuff in my pool. So I'm just ranking these by EV. Um, yeah. And Miami, Miami got got played last week, but they're they're going to be big favorites at quite a few times. If you believe this, another thirty five percent of the people are going to take Buffalo. This is great single pick pools. We're not talking about Cirque or anything like that. But all Buffalo, all Miami, and only eight percent are going to take Kansas City. I mean, it's all supposed to factor in, but I guess the question between these top teams is who's got more value in the future? You know, so like. Miami, they they're they're kind of a wrecking machine. You know what I mean? Like you got several times you can use them. Kansas City, um, yeah, I guess so. And maybe Buffalo too. I don't, I don't listen again. This presume you have all these teams available, right? I, maybe you don't have them available anyway. But but I think between all three of those. I don't I don't know. In regular single pick pools, I I, I guess just I don't know. I guess just take Miami. I really have no idea. You 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 have an opinion on these three big chalks? Uh, not considering what anyone has remaining. Yeah, I like Buffalo the best. Not okay. not because they're the biggest favorite. I mean, it's very slight anyway. But I really like Miami for that eleven to fifteen run. They're they're, yeah. they're going to be so less available yeah. 
compared yeah. to Buffalo. Well, I, I would just ra- I just rather have them. Well, I'll right. tell you what. I'll tell you another week where Miami's going to get soaked up is in this in this week eight where you have only you have there's Chargers, but after that, you know there. But then again, people everybody's going to play the Chargers. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, it's going to be a great week. Too bad I won't be there. That's 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 yeah. a shame. I mean, the, we're, we're going to talk every about single that team is one of the top teams. That's we're going to talk about that in a second. Three. We're going to talk about seven in a second also. Um, so. Yeah, uh, I, I I guess I kind of like. I mean, I don't have Buffalo really, so I'm not. I have Buffalo in Circa, but we're, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're not using them here, so let's let's go to these other teams. So these other teams, to me, like I so funny how things change. Right? At the beginning of the, at the beginning of the year, I'm like, okay, the Rams are going to be minus twelve. They're going to be fifty percent owned against Arizona, right? And it's a question of whether you're going to want to play them or you're going to fade them, whatever it is. And now they're like looking just like some team, you know, like they're like 0.9 EV, 15% owned. They're only a six point favorite. However, <laughs> um, there's, I was about to say, there's not that many chances to use them. But now all of a sudden you're looking at 15 as an option for them as well, you know, which I didn't really think about. Um, so where it came from, they used to be like minus you know, 10 point favor projected with no future value, <laughs> right? Because of that, they thought Arizona was just hopeless. Now they're just like kind of a team. Um, now with that said, uh, I will tell you that this is probably where I'm going to go or where we're going to go in at least one of the double pick pool thing. You know what I mean? Um, maybe, yeah. maybe both entries. Now, again, remember this week, there's only, one, it's just singles this week. You don't go back to doubles till nine and then it's doubles throughout. So, so I think that that the Rams are probably my top. They're my top. There's another one I'll get to in a minute. There's another one, but I think the Rams are probably my top choice uh, in, in 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 double pick pool. And I also have them available in Circa. Well, obviously, I have them available in Circa. And that's a question of whether we play the Rams or or something else. Um, uh, we're basically between the Rams and Miami in Circa. And I'll I'll show you our path to 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 put it in more perspective. But why don't you talk about those two? What do you what do you think of? Um, well, I guess what do you think of the Rams or anything like around there? I like the Rams a lot. If I was still in, we would have all of our Buffalo. So I would I would definitely be taking Buffalo, and but I'd also be going with Rams as well. I really don't like anyone else unless you just take yeah. a flyer, and we'll get and we'll get to those. The reason I like to take the Rams is. In the way this the way this season's shaping up, you can take a few bad picks that from an EV standpoint. But if you land all of them and the and the spreads run and, and the and the teams that are dominating keep dominating, you're going to make up all that EV later because you're going to have all of those teams available. Every time you take Miami or Detroit or Philly or San Francisco, it's going to force you to drop to a team that a lot of other people are going to take. If you can take those teams back half the season, starting in, let's say, 11, you're going to make up whatever EV you're losing right now, you're going to make, you're going to make up, you're just going to make up later. And you'd always rather have the best teams for the end because that's when you're playing for all of the money. You'll have the biggest favorite that's very, that, that is very low owned. And it's a very comfortable position to be in. Well, I talk about this with my partner a lot, you know, when you talk about leverage, about when when to use it. You know, while you can get like kind of like EV leverage like early in the season, it's not worth like that much money. You know what I mean? And, and, and so 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 the later on in the season that you can you can jam in that that high equity play, it's just worth that much more money to do that. Um so yeah, that would that would be uh there's just a lot of setting up for that process. Yeah, it, ta- it I, takes a lot. It takes a lot of plays. So, someone in Circa last year, I don't remember if they won or not, but when we got to, well, I was out, but when it was like week twelve, they had five teams that I couldn't believe that they had. I I, I, I couldn't believe because even I wouldn't have had them if I was still in. And and I looked at their picks and they they took a couple, you know, out there picks, 
but you know, I didn't judge because you know it worked. And the, the, the thing is, you don't make deals in these things. You're either going to win or you're not going to win. This person's strategy was to have as, as a lot of people thought my strategy was crazy last year. I thought this guy's was a little bizarre, but it got to week 12 and he had the best pick available for like five weeks in a row. And that's when it matters absolutely most. If you lose in week seven, you just shrug your shoulders like, well, you know, who knows how I would have, how it would have turned out anyway. You just, you, you, you delete the spreadsheet, you turn your brain off to it. You have no clue what would have happened. So, I really liked, I really liked Washington last week. If, if you didn't pick them and you're still in, now's the time to drop to the Rams because if you took Miami or Detroit last week, not a bad pick at all. I, I would have, I would have taken plenty of Detroit myself, but since I only had two entries, we decided to just like, throw them both on Washington. If you've taken Detroit, you just can't take Miami this week because last week we talked about how Detroit and Miami share like five or six weeks of playability. If you eliminate both those teams from your, from your options, it's going to hurt you at some point. So if you took Miami last week, or if you took Detroit last week, do not take Miami this week. If you have Buffalo, I, I see no problem in taking them re- almost regardless. Um, there's going to be, there's eight, 10, 11 are easier than like 12 through 15. And Kansas city. I really don't know. This is where it's hard. Once you're out, it's, it's hard to gauge I know. how much you like a team versus another. If you, t- if you've taken Philadelphia, do not take Kansas city. Just don't do it because you want Kansas city for 15 and 16. If okay. you have Philadelphia, you can take uh, Kansas city. If you don't have Philadelphia, I would not take Kansas city. Okay. So never take Philadelphia. Ever. So here could be kind of an instruction for people if they want. Okay. So this is the, uh, the circa entry that we have available of the have left. Okay. These are the five teams we picked. Now, again, you'd think like, Oh my God, why would you pick these teams or whatever? It's not like read them off. Re- read them off. So I don't just stare into this. Oh, so screen. it's Baltimore, Dallas, Kansas city, Minnesota, Detroit. Now, again, these are, these are, this is like the residual entry left. You know, we took shots with kind of the better plays in most of our entries, you know, with low future value teams like yeah. Washington's, you know, a couple of times and, and whatever. It's just, this is just, this is just what we're left with. And the reason why I bring this up is because there are like the Led Zeppelin thing. Like, yes, there are two paths you can go by. Right. right? Um, so, so if you guys, if you guys wanted to, you, you can't, you, I don't want you to do this, but everybody else, if you guys wanted to like kind of pause the video sort of, right. And take a snapshot of this and try to think of, of paths that you could foresee. Now, let me, I got to give you guys the rules, right? So the rules are, is that it's single picks, except in week 12, you have to pick from one of the three Thanksgiving day games or Thanksgiving day also means black Friday days. So you're talking about the Detroit green, uh, the Detroit green Bay game, the uh, Dallas Washington game, the San Francisco Seattle game, and then the black Friday, the Miami jets game. Okay. So one of the picks that week has to be from one of those four teams. And then you also have to pick a second team from that week. That's like rule one. Second rule is the Christmas rule, which is week uh, 16. Uh, And and week 16, you need to pick uh, uh, one of the Christmas day games, which I believe are the Philadelphia game and the Kansas game, game, right? And then you have and the to ball pick, and Baltimore and San Francisco. And is. then you have to pick another game from there. Okay. So, so you guys, if you want, you know, pause the video and, and do whatever. And, and, you know, then you'll come back and I'll, I'll start with this. So there are two ways that it's so funny. Like you, you think that there's no way to do this. It's really easy to come up with a path to win, but it's not necessarily like winning. You know what I mean? Like you, I can get to the end, right. But you're going to be on, if you do this, like a lot of different chalk teams. So there are two ways that we can do this. One that is kind of like the easy path that, 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 you know, other people are going to be on. And the other is, is the, is the not people out along the way path. So, so let me just like, just give you an example. Okay. Of what you could do. Let's say we're going to do this if you want. Right. So you could play the Rams this week. You could play uh, Seattle next week. You could play the LA Chargers plus the minus the 12 points in week eight. You could play the Cleveland Browns minus the seven in week nine. 
You could play, we still have Buffalo, right? The Buffalo as the second biggest favorite in week 10. You could play San Francisco uh, in week um, 11, okay? Do you want? On, on Thanksgiving, you could play Miami over the Jets and then maybe Tennessee. I'm just, I'm just picking like top teams, right? Week 13, you could play uh, Tampa, uh, who is going, you know, that, that's, that's going to be like okay against Carolina. In week 14, you could play Cincinnati, who's the top one of the threes over there. In 15, you could play New Orleans, minus seven over the Giants. And then Christmas, you could play Philadelphia. We haven't used them yet, minus like a, like a million points, okay? Uh, we'll find another team in 16, maybe Chicago. Or week 17, you could play Jacksonville, minus 10, right? And then in green, then then Green Bay maybe minus four against Houston against Chicago in week eighteen. Easy money, right? You know what I mean. So so my point is is that it's not impossible to get like a very reasonable path. But along the way, as I describe those, we ran across which we will get back to at least three, maybe more, of teams that are going to be so freaking popular that I probably would not want to play them. Okay. For example, and this is kind of the key to the whole deal, okay? Like week seven, Seattle is going to be just like through the roof, okay? Uh, people jam San Francisco already and people are going to save them. People play Buffalo, okay? Uh, and Kansas City too, you know, whatever. So S Seattle in seven is going to be really chalky. Week eight, Very. the Chargers are going to be 70% on it, okay? Or whatever they're going to be, Okay everybody's got them available. They'll be the biggest favorite. Huge job. Week nine, um, between New Orleans and Cleveland, they're going to, they're going to soak up all the ownership there. Okay. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, week 10, not as much, but yeah, Cincinnati in week 10. Uh, we didn't, we, we weren't going there in week 10, but so, so that was another one. And then whoever on Thanksgiving is going to be popular. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know who it's going to be either Miami or probably my, I don't know how much Miami people have. Dallas, still people have Dallas left, and they're not going to be used that much, I guess, so whatever. And then in week 13, for example, I think Tampa is end up going to end up being highly owned or whatever. So so you can get there, but you can come across like a lot of, you know, a lot of 60% ownership landmines. So another thing, again, mm -hmm. this, this is what we're struggling with, okay, that you could do is do something totally weird and, and, and different. And, and that would be to take Miami this week. Now, now, if you did that, okay, like if you took Miami, um, what you would call it this week, that does a couple of, of, of kind of nasty things to you, okay? What that does, if you're me, is it basically locks you into San Francisco on Thanksgiving, okay? We've already used Detroit. And like you said, you don't want to play Miami if you use Detroit, right? But let's say we did it, okay? Um, yeah. And, th and then and then so we're locking to San Francisco. But then what we're, we would do is we would just really start going after people like we have Buffalo. We could play Buffalo against Seattle in week seven and not go chalky over there. Week eight, if we didn't want to play the Chargers, we could try to go after them, you know, by playing something, you know, like, a, I don't know, like a Tennessee or something like that. Probably have to chalk out on Cleveland. But then in week 10, where it could be kind of kind of sketchy, you have a lot of people playing Cincinnati. We will have saved Seattle by not playing them in Week Seven and be able to play them in Washington against Washington. All right, and then Washington, who we have available in this, we could use them in eleven. You know, remember so many people burned them in Week One. You know that who else is alive, right? So so there's that one. Um, so the point is is that and then since we faded uh, maybe the charge in Week Eight. We might have them in week 14. Um, excuse me, in week, uh, yeah, in week 14, minus seven, when no one's got them available because they burned them all. So there are two totally different, different approaches based on what we have. And we're just, and the, and, and the thing is, we don't know which way to go. Definitely, if we play the Rams, we're more flexible. I mean, 100%. You know, we save Miami, push them at that 11 through 15 slot where exactly what you want to do. Okay. Or, uh, if you play the Miami, which is a safer play, right, than 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 the Rams, you become less committal. You can become you become more committal, and now you're just then you're you're going after people. So two different approaches to the same thing. Um, uh, any 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 gut thoughts? 
Yeah, I, I really don't like taking Miami at all this week in, in anything. I, I there, there's if they had like a standalone great game later in the season, I could easily change my mind. But you know, barring you know, well, two of concussions, right. they have they have so many spots and. You know, again, I, I I have a very aggressive approach. It did not work this year. It yeah. worked great last year. I love the Rams. I I would I like I like Buffalo too. But the reason I like the Rams is it allows you to keep all the teams that you really want to have, and you're never going to be in a position where you're not going to use them. It's absolutely impossible. Yeah. Buffalo has eight, ten, eleven. Miami's got like seven spots. Yeah, but don't forget Buffalo and seven might be the the, the nuts if Seattle. Yeah, and that's fine. And that's fine. You can take right. yeah Buffalo even next week too. That, that, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I would just much rather have those teams and go down that way because if you go down, you're not going to go down the route where oh my gosh, I didn't even use Buffalo. You know, right. barring right. an injury. If you go to it, if if you wait, you might just end up being in a spot where you're supposed to drop to like a three point favorite right. and fade like two sevens and eights. And there's a few different weeks that you pointed out, like when the Cleveland, New Orleans, Cincinnati, the the you know the middle of the road type teams have you know share the same week of playability. And there's like three of those. It's really tough because I mean you're gonna either pick one of them or you're gonna fade all three and drop to a three, or you could just you know, start making moves now. And especially in Circa, the Washington ownership last week, that should make you feel really comfortable about taking the Rams. Washington was like a six-point favorite going up against two tens, and they were like 13% owned with nothing left to play for the rest of the season. The Rams are a six-point favorite up against a 14 and a 15-point favorite that you also really want to have for later. I mean, I guess they should, they should, they'll be lower owned than Washington was last year. It's hard to even believe this this pick percent pick percentage, other than the fact that Miami and Buffalo are not you know available to everybody because they've been used across multiple yeah, weeks. Yeah, so I, I hate to um, uh, yeah, uh, and, and I'll tell you that the Commanders at only seventeen percent was pretty uh pretty surprising to me as well. I thought they were going to be twenty five. Um, I didn't think people were going to, I really didn't think people were going to burn Miami. Uh, I thought people were going to save them a little bit more, um, but uh, maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe the Rams do end up lower owned than the people. This is what people are doing. Um, but other- even, even regardless of that, it, you, it, it, if you get through a couple of these weeks where you save that group, it's going to pay off great dividends later, or you're not going to even know if you would have got to that point anyway, even if you went the other route. Okay. One, uh, so let's talk about a couple of uh, kind of uh, bow wow plays because there's one that I'm considering in the double pick pool thing. Um, and that, uh, the only one I actually see, I mean, listen, if you have Baltimore available, you know, you're better than I am. Um, I think there's, I think there's two off the wall picks. Yeah. So the two that I, that I identified were, I mean, were Jacksonville and Las Vegas. That's, those are the two that I wrote down as well. Yeah. So the Jacksonville play, um, I like a lot in the, uh, especially in doubles. Um, because again, in doubles, you just want to just, you, you want to take teams that, you know, they're, you might not want to use at, at all cost, you know, to get to doubles. Right. Yes. Um, and Jacksonville. Yeah. I mean, they could be used at like 17, but that's a long road to Tipperary. <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure. Like if I get to 17, I'll, I'll, as I, as I was talking to my partner earlier, I'm like, we get to 17, I'll find some high school team to play. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. You know, well, and, you know and, and I'm not even, I don't even need to look at weeks nine and 10 and, and, and line them up by spread. Las Vegas is probably going to be a fade in nine and 10 anyway. So, well, I was talking about them. Jacksonville, but yeah, but Vegas, yeah, but, and Vegas is, is, is the other off the wall one is that they, on their surface, look like they have value in nine and 10. Uh, they might, but not, this. but not in the format we're talking about, which is. Well, but I don't know. But maybe, the maybe in nine, like if they make it there, like New Orleans and Cleveland are going to be really popular, but Vegas will be right behind. I mean, the 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 strategy there is to fade all of them and take. Well, them. that's exactly. Yeah. That's well, we, we got a plan. <laughs> that's we, right. you, yeah. Or you take, or you take the Chargers if you don't take them in eight. I, well, exactly. It, it, fading and double picks, you really want to fade. 
three teams because if those if, if you if you if you're able to fade three highly uh, popular picks that could lose. I mean, the, and the, at these spreads, yeah. we're not talking about 15 point spreads here. We're talking about sevens and sixes. Right. If you get the perfect scenario, that's going to wipe out over 90% of the field um, with this, with this list of teams. And then you, and then you could get through with Baltimore and the chargers or Baltimore and, and the Rams. So we're talking about a five team plausible parlay uh, without having to dip too you know, too low relative to what the, the point spreads are at the top, which is only seven. Yeah. Um, all right. I, I guess that's really all that I have. I mean, just to summarize again, unfortunately, it really does come down to what you have available nowadays and what your and what your pool looks like and things like that. Aside from that, it's just more of like a sweat for my pools. You know, that's that's what we did last year, right? Like I was out, like kind of Earl. I, well, actually, I won that pool, right? In like week ten, and then I was out yeah. of everything else, and then we basically just just track your pool like right to the end or something. So we'll uh. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I encourage everybody to post in the Discord. And again, while I'll, 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 I'll do this. While I really hesitate to give specific advice to people in the Discord, um, there was one guy I did, I did comment to, and I, I felt okay with this. He was suggesting like a certain team. I forget what it was, like the, the Patriots or something. And what I just said was like, if you're going to do that, I just prefer to take Atlanta or something like that. I forget even what I said. I said Atlanta or Denver. Like, I think like, I'll do that. You know, because to me, that was like such an obvious, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. why would you, why would you take, you know, for the same reasons, like a no future value team, but that's you know, two point underdog as opposed to a no future value team. That's a two point favorite. You know what I mean? That's just made, you know, no sense. But, um, and, and, and my, and my, my summary real quick is if you've already taken Detroit, don't take Miami. Yeah. And if you have both of them available, this is a great opportunity to drop to the Rams. Yep. And save both those teams. Yep. They have multiple spots on on shared weeks. Yep. You will not win this pool without having not used them. Absolutely impossible, unless the landscape completely changes. You know, and it would require remember, uh, quarterback injury for the remainder of the season. It's funny. Remember, uh, this is the first year. Circa used to have this like really nasty rule. It wasn't a rule; it was like a bonus that if you didn't use like the previous year's Super Bowl winners like the whole season and still made it through, you got like a million dollar bonus. So you had to, uh, you, so and people who chase those, and we talked about that a lot and uh, it's probably negative EV to chase that. Um, Cause there were so many opportunities to use those teams that made sense. We, we abandoned it in week three last year when we yeah. took Cincinnati on Thursday when, yeah. when two of uh, was injured. It was like perfect. It was yeah. Like, all right. I guess that will do it. Uh, congrats on the, uh, on the new gig. And uh, I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Later.